Welcome to Renolda Church. Take just a moment to fill out the Connect card you received when you arrived. Let us know how we can pray for you and your loved ones this week. Renolda Church gathers in four locations across the triad, and the Connect card is such a great way to help us stay in touch across all of our campuses. Starting the new year is one of the most exciting times here at Renolda Church because it means our blessing service is just right around the corner. What is the blessing service, you might be asking? Well, it's a time when we gather together and receive a personal blessing from our church leaders that is a positive faith-filled vision spoken over our lives. Blessing is the fuel God uses to move us forward on the path he has destined for us. He blesses us because he loves us. Bring your family to the blessing service and experience the power of blessing. Use the link below to learn more. Your year-end gifts are vital to the continued mission of Renolda Church. More than ever, people are looking for an answer, and we have it. The answer is and will always be Jesus. Every gift is an investment in changing the world through the message of the grace of Jesus Christ. You can give your year-end gifts securely on our website or by downloading the Renolda Church app from your app store. From the bottom of all of our hearts here at Renolda, thank you for your continued faithfulness to the mission of the gospel work here in the triad and throughout the world. Merry Christmas, everyone. Very special word of welcome to everybody, especially joining us online. Are you ready for some good news on this Christmas day? Joy to the world also means joy to you. What I mean is that you have a share in the joy of the world that joy is something that's not just meant to be shared, but as you learn to enjoy blessing, whether it is specifically something about your life or someone else, your joy increases. We've been talking about joy all Advent long, the joy of every longing heart, and it's fitting on Christmas Day to return to the familiar words of Luke and look at this joy that erupts in the shepherds. Luke 2, verse 8. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you, is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he's pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Good news of great joy that will be for all the people, not just Mary, not just Joseph, and not just the shepherds, great news, great joy for all the people. This is a message of shared joy. So I have been, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, downstairs in my home as I recuperated from a COVID cold. And my wife, she just uh, every now and then would throw some food down the stairs at me. And I now know what it feels like to be in solitary confinement where they just shove a little tray uh, in, into your cell, you know, every now and then. And um, so I'd been working from home, but when I wasn't working, trying to find something to do, I wound up for whatever reason, watching, get this, Wheel of Fortune reruns. Yeah, I, I don't know. I like Wheel of Fortune, and uh, I started just watching Wheel of Fortune. I don't know why. Maybe it's because Wheel of Fortune is happy. Nobody gets too stressed on Wheel of Fortune. Pat Sajak is always in a good mood, and he always you're always pulling for everybody on the show, and uh, even when people don't do well. I don't know, it's still kind of happy. I've watched one episode 
in which the contestant, this man, not only did he not ever solve a puzzle, he never actually got a letter. <laughs> it was bad. And at the end of the evening, Pat walked over to him and said, well, not your night, uh, but we're going to send you home with $1,000 anyway. And hey, I hope you had fun. And I was like, yeah, I had fun. So everybody's having fun. I, uh, I watched one episode where uh, I've learned a lot about Wheel of Fortune over the last week. Uh, but I, I, uh, I watched one episode of this lady. She twice blurted out the answer when it wasn't her turn. And so the contestant to her left was able to just get the correct answer. At the end, Pat Sajak came here and said, well, um, maybe not your night tonight, but uh, you sure were generous, <laughs> and I hope you had fun. Well, everybody has fun on Wheel of, of Fortune. And the amazing thing about it is that you can sit there and watch this show, 20 to 30 minute show, and you don't know a single person on there. You have no idea who these contestants are. Uh, you, you don't know if you sat down and had a meal with them, if you'd like them at all. You don't know their theology, their ideologies. You don't know what they're like when they're in, in their in, in a everyday workplace. You, you have no idea, but you're pulling for them. And, and that's the thing that's so amazing about it is that in a very real sense, while I'm sitting there getting over my cold, that I'm sitting there and I'm pulling for them. And when somebody would win, I, I realized I, I, I wanted them to win. And when they did win, I felt a little bit of joy. I shared in someone else's joy. And I think that that's part of what this means, good news of great joy that shall be for all the people. I think one of the giant secrets of the Christian life is that we can grow into a place where we discover joy, not just in something that's changed about our circumstances, but just in the joy of others. In other words, there's a place of self-forgetfulness where your soul finds delight in another's well-being. And this is what happened with these shepherds. Look again at verse 16. And they went with haste. That's what you do when you're excited about something. You run towards something when you have the energy of joy about it. And if there's something you dread or there's something you're not excited about, you don't run with haste towards it. And they told everyone about what they saw. Verse 17, when they saw it, after they'd seen baby Jesus, they went, made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. They just started spontaneously sharing with others the joyful proclamation, the news that they'd been given, and how they'd witnessed it firsthand. They just started telling other people, when you're overjoyed with something that you've seen, you, you want to begin to tell others. What I'm talking about here is shared joy. So back to my wheel of fortune expertise now, you can win a million dollars on the wheel of fortune. It's hard because what has to happen is that during one of the regular rounds where you're solving a puzzle, you have to have landed on the million dollar card and you have to take it, hold on to it, and then you got to solve that puzzle and never spin the wheel and land on bankrupt. And you have to be the big winner who goes to the final puzzle to try to win the jackpot. And you spin another wheel, and Pat pulls off a card of where the, the wheel lands, and it's hidden as to what the prize will be in the final puzzle. And you have to win the final puzzle, and he has to open it up, and it has to have happened to have been the million-dollar winner. And all that's got to take place. And so I kept going, does anybody ever win the million dollars? I'm just sitting there like, I want to see somebody win a million dollars. Well, finally... I just went on YouTube to look it up and see. And sure enough, it's happened only three times. Three times people won a million dollars. And I'm like, I want to see somebody win in a million dollars. But what I found was an incredible montage of the greatest moments ever on Wheel of Fortune. And I just got to laughing out loud at some of the remarkable moments, which people have solved puzzles out of just left field, just nowhere. I mean, I remember watching this one, and this lady 
it, she the, makes the first guess at the puzzle. She says, give me an L, and it's a phrase. So I think seven-word phrase. And Pat says, yes, there's one L. Look it up there, seven words, and there's one L on the whole board. And she looked at it, and she said, I've got a good feeling about this. And solved the puzzle based on just that. Another guy was in the final jackpot round, and um, it's a thing. And it ended in E-R, six letters. And that was only letters he got. Ends in E-R. And Pat looked at him and said, well, it's a thing. And unfortunately, a lot of things end in E-R. But you never know. Sound it out. Say some things. Maybe you'll land on it. And the man just, first thing, he blurted out, gopher. Gopher. And it was gopher. I mean, it was just, you know, anyway, I'm sitting down there just, you know, watching this thing. And then I see the three times that people win a million dollars. I had to go upstairs interrupt my wife and daughter from watching the great British baking show and say, you guys got to watch the Wheel of Fortune montage and see these incredible moments in these people's lives. And we sat there and just, I said, is that unbelievable? I'm saying is that joy is designed by God to be something that is enriched as it is shared. So, so joy Joy comes in the shared experience of the well-being that is not just for you, but for others. And then as that joy is shared, as it experienced together, it amplifies, it grows. That's what was happening with the shepherds. And they returned, they returned, verse 20, glorifying and praising God for all they'd seen. They were rejoicing which means to have joy over and over again. But don't miss this. The shepherds returned. I wonder what changed in the shepherds' lives. They didn't get a multi-million dollar book contract out of the deal. They, they, They didn't become Instagram famous. They, They didn't suddenly become celebrities. They went back to their, their flocks. On the one hand, nothing had changed. On the other hand, everything had changed. Some years ago, I was talking to Marion Blackwell, who is um, an elder in our church, who's the director of our healing ministries. And some years ago, we were talking about the healing ministries. We're talking about the life ministry teams, people that pray for people after services, healing and hope ministers that give their time, volunteer, minister um, with people by appointment. And we are talking about what we love about this so much, what we love about giving ourselves away and being used by God to help someone else be healed. And I said, Marion, what is it? What is it that we, when, when we're recruiting somebody to become a life minister, for example, what is it that we have to offer them, you know? Why would somebody want to do this? And I love what he said. He said, we get a front row seat to watch God heal and bless people. And that is a cause of great joy. The shepherds returned to their flocks. I don't know if any of their circumstances really changed, but they were changed on the inside because they'd had a front row seat to see the goodness of God. They had personally received the message of joy to the world. If you want your joy to increase, in a very real sense, what you need is for your love for others to increase so that you share greater delight and every good thing that comes their way. I, I've mentioned before when Bennett was little, I mean real little, and he would watch basketball on TV with me, and he got so he loved watching, he called it hoop ball. He loved to watch the hoop ball. And I realized early on that little Bennett was celebrating every time the ball went through the hoop, not just for one team, but anytime anybody got it in the hoop, he'd jump up, twirl around, sometimes giggle and fall down in laughter. 
<laughs> and I remember the first time I was watching a game with Carolina was playing somebody, and there's Bennett, and he's celebrating the hoop the hoop ball for anybody. And I realized I got to start teaching this boy. No, we don't celebrate every time it goes through. We're only happy when it goes through our team. So I guess that's when I began to teach him how to be miserable if your team's not winning. Somewhere on our journey to adulthood, we got the idea we can only celebrate if there's something that is specifically relevant to my particular circumstance. And what we do is we make our joy shrink. But the expansive grace of the gospel is a message that's for everybody. And I think that's why these shepherds were so happy. It wasn't just that something like some big grand prize had been given to the shepherds. No, they, they were still shepherds. But they had experienced the grace of God up close. They had seen these things that had come to pass and their hearts were filled with a shared joy. All of this goes far to explain why I say joy to the world also means joy to you. Every place that you see joy, every place that you can delight in the well-being of another, and every aspect of the gospel, which is good news for all the world, every bit of it that you can embrace and delight in is going to increase your joy. Joy to the world is joy to you. And that's the gospel.